Welcome back from the courts. Police continue to crack down on white collar crimes. 22 year old Lysandre Paul appeared before Magistrate Kendra Kelly on Monday, charged with three counts of fraud. According to court records, Paul on August 1st was in possession of a forged First Caribbean International Bank check drawn on the account of Atlantic Roofing made payable to himself in the amount of $2,930, attempting to cash that check. Paul pleaded not guilty to one count of possession of a false document, one count of uttering a false document, and one count of attempt to fraud. He was granted bail in the sum of $2,500. He is set to return to court for trial on October 18th. Also from the courts on Monday, we told you this yesterday, 28-year-old Ashley Knowles, a.k.a. Nexus Seymour, charged with 12 counts of fraud after being found in possession of a false Bahamian voters card and a national insurance smart card while trying to cash a fake CIBC check on the account of CG Atlantic General Insurance in the amount of $3,200. That was August 28th. She was granted $8,000 bail, returns to court on October 11th. On Sunday, during a national address, Prime Minister Philip Davis revealed a major restructuring of his cabinet. One of the junior ministers affected by the change is Minister of State for Public Service, Pia glover Rule, who has been elevated to substantive minister for labor and the public service. On Monday, Fred Mitchell, the senior minister of foreign affairs and public service, congratulating Mrs. glover Rule on her promotion. The Prime Minister announced the changes to the Cabinet yesterday, and as a consequence, the Minister of State Pierre Glover Roll uh, at the Public Service, with effect from 11 September 2023, Bahamas becomes a full Minister with responsibility for Labour and the Public Service. It was my pleasure working with her, and I wish her well in her new role. I'm certain she's able to the task. Congratulations. There has been widespread speculation for several weeks leading up to the Prime Minister's announcement of the new cabinet structure, particularly by the official opposition and its supporters who see the cabinet shuffle as a sign that the Davis administration is failing. Minister Mitchell says the opposition and government detractors are basically making a mountain out of a molehill as the cabinet shuffle is routine. So we're almost at year two. The new Governor General Cynthia Pratt is in place. We have a new uh, session of Parliament coming up, a new, portfo a new portfolio allocations to all those newly charged and with fresh allocations to those who are continuing. We have now more than ever to do our very best for the Bahamian people. I want to say to these folk of the FNM, dancing up and down over the past couple of weeks about who's going where, what and when, life has changed, not ended. The parliamentary system that we have allows tweaking to take place and is therefore more flexible for public administration than other systems. This should therefore be looked at as a rather regular constitutional exercise and not some act of uh, disequilibrium. Again, I believe we have a good team and that they are able to the task and I urge all PLPs and people of goodwill to support the cabinet and its endeavors to continue the job of restoring prosperity to our great little nation. While members of Parliament remain on summer break until October 4th, Cabinet Ministers continue their work, especially those who have been promoted and those with new portfolios. Cabinet meetings resumed today. According to UN expert Atia Waris, who specializes in foreign debt, financial obligations, and human rights, planning with a look towards the future is needed for the Bahamas. Ms. Waris was speaking with local media after conducting an assessment on the Bahamas' recovery in the aftermath of Bahamas leaks, Hurricane Dorian, and the COVID-19 pandemic. She says support from the international community would go a long way to help the country's recovery. The Bahamas needs long-term financing, planning to address its climate vulnerability and economic dependence on tourism. And it is very important that the high income status, which is limiting the access of the Bahamas to international financial institution loans at concessionary rates, as well as development aid, should be opened up. The reality is that the international community's assistance and support could go a long way in helping this country improve its already very positive efforts. Ms. Wars also advocates for a change from using a country's GDP to using a different index to determine which countries receive financial assistance. What I notice is one of the indicators the government has to use is that of gross domestic product as well as per capita. But because of the unique challenge of the Bahamas, where you have a large number of high net worth individuals, 
your rates are not reflective of what is on the ground. And it is important to use more multi-dimensional indices. And I would suggest using the Human Rights Development Index because I believe that that is, will result in a more reflective data set. Asked whether enough commitment has been shown by the international community in assisting small island developing states like the Bahamas, Ms. Warris believes debt to nature swaps can be useful, but says the exchange rate is too low. I think that there is a good case to be made for financial compensation on this issue. I cannot say I know the full assessment of it, but I know there is a need for it. My bigger concern is also around, and I've had conversations around that with the government, is also around issues like debt to nature swaps. And while I think those can be very useful, I think that the measure of the debt right now for which the nature is going to be swapped is too low. I think it has to be much higher because we are talking about a nature swap for posterity. And if you trade that off with a country in the global north or a manufacturing uh, space, where they will continue to manufacture, continue to make profit, and continue to pollute, the, that trade-off becomes bigger and bigger as time goes by. Last month, Prime Minister Davis was outspoken in his belief that not enough has been done by the international partners who have given their commitment to assisting small island states in the fight against climate change and its effects. He suggested there needs to be a mechanism of compensation against the biggest contributors or contributors rather towards climate change crisis. Ms. Warris agrees with Prime Minister Davis. She is awaiting more information and data from the government of the Bahamas before she completes her report, which is expected to be presented to the United Nations Human Rights Council in March of 2024. With September being World Alzheimer's Month, Stapleton Gardens Neighborhood Watch, in conjunction with the Bahamas Alzheimer's Association, launched its registration drive for seniors in the Stapleton Gardens community living with Alzheimer's. President of the Neighborhood Watch, Juette Smith, also had a parent that suffered with this disease. She says no longer will senior citizens and people living with this brain disorder be left in the dark. It's no easy task to deal with persons with this type of illness and it takes a special person to deal with these type of person. So here it is, we here today to launch this initiative for them that we're going to put a database in place in our community that will stretch in our community and then hence across the length and breadth of our country that we no longer will see our seniors, our precious pearls walking the streets and don't know where they are or where to go. We have also partnered with the police who's going to show us in a few minutes what they do and what is done when they are picked up or when they are reported lost. Because this is what they do. They try to get out because they're trying to have some sort of familiarity in uh, everyday life. That's why they try to get out. That's why they walk the streets, okay? And we want to put, give them some dignity in their senior years in life. A part of its mandate for care and safety of seniors in the community is a first of its kind activity community center which is currently in the works. The center will be outfitted with an office for the Bahamas Alzheimer's Association. With over 2,000 people in the Bahamas currently living with this disease and the forecast for that number to triple by 2050, President of the Bahamas Alzheimer's Association, Wendy Poitier, is calling on the government to get the ball rolling on the National Dementia Plan. In 2017, the Bahamas signed on as a part of World Health Org WHO, World Health Organization, to commit that the country will uh, produce, have, a national dementia plan. This national dementia plan will address such things as, uh, you know, the risk factors. It will also address the things like, you know, how are we going to provide funding? Because we know right now we have over 2,000 persons who have Alzheimer's or dementia here. And by 2050, it is estimated that that number will increase to some 6,000. But if we are able to make sure we put these risk factors and make sure we uh, put the National Dementia Plan in place, how we are going to deal with these issues, training our doctors to deal with when they do screenings every year when people come in, just simple things like that. 
uh, making sure that you have uh, proper education on nutrition. That is also one of the factors. These simple things that they can put in place. According to studies made by Alzheimer's Disease International, aside from aging, there are other risk factors that can possibly heighten your chance of getting Alzheimer's, including lack of physical activity, smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, air pollution, and head injuries. To learn more, visit the Bahamas Alzheimer's Association's Facebook page. And finally, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas announced on Monday that it will be participating in the 7th Annual Celebration of World Investor Week, scheduled for October 2nd to October 8th. World Investor Week is an initiative of the International Organization of Securities Commission. This global campaign raises awareness about the importance of investor education and protection and the work of the member securities regulators in these critical areas. Investor resilience, crypto assets, and sustainable finance, they have been identified as the main themes for the 2023 campaign. The Securities Commission of the Bahamas has participated in the annual event every year since its inception in 2017. Interested individuals can find more information about investor education and the Commission's planned initiatives for World Investor Week 2023 on the Commission's website or on their Facebook page. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. I'm Jerino Saunders. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.